Hello, my name is Mark, and I live in Seattle, Washington. I've been a fan of Half-Life since its first inception so many years ago. Uh, I'm not an extremely avid video game player, nor have I been since a childhood. Uh, I came from the Atari 2600 generation, and I'm still a, a lifetime adventure fanatic. Uh, how often can one really say that they are a square, and that very day they slew a giant duck with an arrow-shaped sword? <laughs> I've, I've played through Half-Life 2, Episode 1, several times now, and greatly enjoyed the commentary feature, which gives a solid glimpse of both the design and production process of the game, but more importantly to me, a notion of much of the thought process behind it, about which I'm exceedingly interested. You might find as I go along that I'm far more enamored with the Half-Life story than I am with the actual gameplay. I normally don't go in for science fiction, but something about Half-Life has always been rather gripping for me. Now I come from a fine arts background, and indeed I do look at games like Half-Life 2 and Episode 1 as massive, multimedia, and completely interactive works of art. My intent with this presentation is, one, to simply show my appreciation for the enormous work that Valve has put into this highly enjoyable project, but also, two, to perhaps give you a perspective on the game that may be somewhat unique, as I'm not the usual target demographic for an FPS game. Whether or not my observations of any real value at all remains to be seen, but I will consider it a success if it simply makes you chuckle. So, I present to you my quote-unquote critique of Half-Life 2, Episode 1. Uh, I do so in a format very similar to your own in-game commentary mode in the hopes that I can somehow show my enjoyment for how exceptional I thought this feature was for a video game. It was great to sort of, uh, you know, quote unquote, wake up uh, to, to dogs, uh, big friendly face, peeking through the rubble. Though it did leave me to wonder why exactly did the Vortigons, after rescuing me, uh, pile me underneath uh, a large amount of uh, bricks and broken pieces of concrete. And of course, Alex, delighted to see us, hugs and kisses. It's very, it's, it's touching, especially her, her little moment of shyness. A little bit of embarrassment afterwards for her uh, emotional outburst. Good to see that the gravity gun remained uh, intact after uh, the, the events at the end of Half-Life 2, and dog wiggling excitedly like a little puppy. As you mentioned in the commentary, players indeed like dog, and I can wholly understand why. Um, he exhibits all the lovable qualities of a real canine, yet all the intelligence of a human, and he does so uh, in a way that's both humorous and light-hearted without being silly. Uh, I mean, w what young man would not want a huge robotic dog to play with and to be protected by? I, I don't know any such person. Certainly not myself. If I had the means and the spare parts in my studio apartment, I would certainly build one. Here's my favorite dog sequence where he helps uh, Alex get better radio reception for the, uh, the communication device. He, like, he puts his arm up in the air and uh, twists his hand back and forth like a radar aerial. I don't know, I just find that really endearing for some reason. One of the things that amazes me the most about Dog is that while he cannot speak and can only utter you know, certain beeps and whoops, um, not unlike R2-D2 from Star Wars, he is still able to convey a large range of not only emotion, but even basic communication through the use of just body language and facial expressions. Now Dog's face appears to be constructed out of the remnants of a combine scanner, and the, uh, the three flaps, I call them pedicles, nearly take the place of eyebrows on a human and uh, in conjunction with the aperture on his one red eye are able to express a large amount of feeling. It couldn't have been easy work to animate dog in such a way as to convey these feelings and I wonder if during development you had an actual human actor who portrayed dog and whose uh, body movements were mimicked or if dog was simply animated entirely from scratch. Either way, uh, it really is a job exceedingly well done, and it's wonderful to see Dog again in an active role, uh, something that I would hope uh, continues or even uh, expands in Episode 2. The ledge sequence seems, of course, the logical progression for trying to uh, re-enter the Citadel. As we know from Half-Life 2, the Citadel is surrounded by massive gatework and a nearly impassable gorge. Uh, connected to the, the mainland, as it were, by a few unreachable bridges and railroad trestles. 
Now, I'm personally not fond of heights, even in a video game, and the sheer drop uh, along the ledge produces an enjoyable sensation of anxiety, which sounds like an oxymoron, but as you should all know better than most, uh, is not. Uh, there's lots of little things to see along the way, like this old boot. Uh, there's also this ancient PC, which, while obviously old and cream-colored, appears upon closer investigation to have a rather hefty PCI Express video card. Maybe. <laughs> At the very beginning, before you even uh, make your way to the ledge proper, is this bicycle which has, uh, which was unfortunate enough to become impaled on this pole, and which anyone even remotely curious or impatient will try to remove. <clears throat> in fact, the first time I played through, I ignored Dr. Kleiner entirely in my efforts to remove the bicycle from the pole and had to uh, replay it in order to hear what he was saying about the reactor core. If you manage to not fall into the gorge, you then come to this rather open space. My initial feeling about this space was that it seemed kind of vaguely uncomfortable for me to reasons I couldn't quite understand. Uh, as it played, it was obvious that the space provided like certain functionality necessary to the forward progression of the game, such as making the player realize the almost incomprehensible scale of the Citadel itself. Uh, what disastrous condition it was now in since the, the portal explosion at the end of Half-Life 2, and also how the player was going to get back into the Citadel itself. I, I finally realized that what felt odd to me was that I lingered in this space for a significant amount of time, while being no help whatsoever in finding entry to the Citadel, and then in simply being presented with the solution, uh, as opposed to discovering it myself. Of course, none of this detracts from uh, what actually does occur, which is what uh, that dog uh, puts you and Alex in the carcass of an old van, uh, an old van with the Lambda logo on the back, it's a nice touch, and then he throws you into the Citadel. So, I mean, if I was just going to be given a solution, I don't think I could have asked for a, a better one. To satisfy my own curiosity, I tried to think of a couple different alternatives for, for uh, entering the Citadel. Uh, but I did not have a great deal of luck, unfortunately. I thought that maybe the scout car would be a good way to get in, um, despite the fact that the scout car was uh, taken by the Combine uh, in Half-Life 2. Um, I thought that perhaps I could jump over the gorge into that, that open area, uh, like a doorway there in the Citadel. I realize the scout car only has the one seat, but Alex is rather tiny and would probably fit uh, snugly between the back of the seat and the motor. Right, so I'm getting ready here. And uh, here we go! Oh! Ooh! Crikey! Oh! Maybe that wasn't such a good idea after all. So then I thought, well, if that scout car can't make it, then perhaps the airboat might be worth a shot, because that, uh... It's much more of a versatile vehicle, so... Um, probably should have pointed it at the opening, but uh, here we go, floating gently down into the gorge, um, and down the walls, and actually made a safe landing at the bottom, although, as it turns out, there's no way to get into the citadel from down here, uh, at all. Just a lot of junk and fluff and, and dirt and no openings, and now there's no way to get back up. So, uh, also not, not a very good solution on my part. You just, sometimes you just can't get a break. I felt that Combine architecture was one of the hallmarks of Half-Life 2, and I was very pleased to see this not only continued in Episode 1, but to see even more variations upon the general theme. Naturally, nowhere in the game is the Combine expression more apparent than uh, the Citadel, with its almost ubiquitous palette of deep blue and violet and occasional browns, uh, textures of unfinished metal and polished glass, its many obtuse angles and sharp edges, and almost complete absence of curved lines, the Citadel presents a look that is completely unique, uh, alien, and terrifying. And the place looks completely cold and brutal. Everything has this air of harshness and unquestioning utility about it.